Hello and thank you so much for choosing to click on today's video. I'm going to be doing a full review of my Mark Cross Grace box bag. Now this review I have done on Instagram already where I listed the pros and cons, but frankly I was not used to doing reviews at the time. I don't really have mod shots, I don't have all the things that I would like to include. I've improved a little bit. So that is why we are going to remake this video now for YouTube because when I first bought this bag back in March, I could not find a lot of information. There were one or two helpful reviews. Frankly, they were all really positive, which is fantastic. It encouraged me to buy it, but there are some cons that I have learned along the way using this bag that I would have liked to have known. And that is gonna be the purpose of this video to hopefully make you know whether or not it's right for you. Things that I would have really appreciated knowing. I bought this bag back in March at 50% off. Now that is a hefty discount for a luxury bag. YSL will often go on sale, Gucci sometimes, but usually it's in that like 15 to 30% off range. 30% off is a steal, but 50% off is unusual for a luxury bag. And I absolutely feel that this constitutes as luxury. It's a historic brand. They've been around for ages making beautiful handbags. I know there was a brief time when they closed their doors, they shut down production, but they have been back up and running for a number of years now. I know that this bag was first made for Grace Kelly when she was in a rear window directed by Alfred Hitchcock. And hmm, I don't want to start off by being really negative, but it was product placement. And frankly, I think in them calling it the Grace box bag, they're kind of riding the Grace Kelly gravy train. I know this, you know, it's common with Hermes because she actually used the Kelly bag. She famously used it to hide her baby bump from paparazzi because, you know, she used this massive Kelly bag. This was made for the film. And if you've seen the movie, when it gets to the point where she pulls out her overnight case, it's a little bit bigger than this, you know, and she has this flourish where she rips out her negligee. It's, it feels like an ad. <laughs> and then, the, and then it's not talked about the rest of the movie. So I kind of wish that they would steer away from that. Like we get it, you were featured in the movie with some contract beforehand, just like how you'll never see Coca-Cola and Pepsi in the same movie because all of that is dealt with beforehand. You know, Gatorade is really well known for making an appearance in sports films. It's product placement. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of my system because I had to share it, it's something I've always felt and the whole point of this is to tell you what I honestly think. <laughs> Let's get into the pros and cons. So the biggest pro for me is the style. Obviously, it's gotta be the look. It's so unusual. There is nothing else like this. It's this cute little briefcase. I just love it. You know, it's leather wrapped around a poplar frame. It has a red Napa leather interior. All of the box bags have this red lining. So it just really pops. It's especially stunning on their white bags. They're black, just the contrast is incredible. Really plain inside with a tiny zipper. You can't fit much in there, but that's okay. It's really roomy. I just love the look. It's so unique and yet classic. I don't see anything like this. I don't know any other bags that make these cute little briefcases. But at the same time, you know, it is the perfect blending of a masculine and feminine style. I think it looks great with my really feminine dresses. At the same time, I can dress it down. Jeans, t-shirt, it looks really good and pulled together. Another big pro for me is how understated it is. There is a little bit of just like the engraved Mark Cross. One second, my cat is being really loud. Okay, now that my cat is not making noise. <laughs> so this is engraved right here with Mark Cross. That is the only labeling on this. Otherwise, because it's a fairly unknown brand, no offense to Mark Cross, but they are, you don't see them. It would be a really iconic shape, but they're not that well known. So it's incredibly understated. No one is going to know how much you spend on your handbag. Now I have a Chanel. I like some Louis Vuitton pieces, but your eye, when you see someone carrying those bags, your eye immediately goes to the bag. 
I don't always want that. For me, it's not always appropriate at work. I, if I'm meeting up with new friends, I don't want them thinking, oh, how much did she spend on that handbag right there? Because that, it is so noticeable, even if you're not into handbags, you see those bags, but this, it's not a problem. It's beautiful and elegant. I love them in the black, they're really great, but people aren't going to be thinking about your handbag, which I consider to be a huge pro. I want someone to look at me first and then my style, uh, which doesn't, I think, always happen when you're carrying a Chanel. It's, like I said, I have a Chanel, it's not a deal breaker, but I like the variety. Now, as I mentioned, I got this at 50% off. I don't think I would have pulled the trigger on this bag, given how little was actually known about it without that 50% off, I would consider it a pro that they have seasonal sales. Every year they come out with incredible colors, pinks, reds, blues, everything, different textures. This is the tumbled grain calfskin and it is really sturdy, completely scratch resistant, but they also have smoother nappa leather as they have patent bags. So you have so much variety and those seasonal bags do tend to go on sale. 50% off is a massive discount for a luxury bag. They have the history. They are a lot cheaper than Chanel and even Louis Vuitton. I know that their canvas is growing in price, but this is a full leather bag, leather lined, poplar frame. So a lot of work goes, in, goes into this construction, but it's a, I don't wanna say reasonable price, but it's on the lower end in the luxury spectrum because it is still a lot of money but it's a little bit more attainable while still having all those wonderful features like the gold-plated hardware and interesting history. So my final pro would be how roomy this bag is. I can fit everything I would need, and this is going to be the what's can fit in my bag portion of the video. As I said, it is just a big hole. I would not recommend stuffing this bag because it could get a little difficult to organize given that it is just a, just a box. But I can easily fit my Google Pixel something phone. And let me try and show you right there. There is a ton of room, but I can easily fit my phone, a face mask, let's see, sunglasses. I don't use a Continental wallet. It couldn't fit in here anyway, but I do use a French wallet and that can easily fit. I know that people are gonna think this is stupid, but frankly, I use an old sunglasses case instead of a zippered pouch. I've been doing this all year now and I wouldn't go back. I would maybe love to get an okay case at some point, but right now this works really well. <laughs> I don't care if it makes me look cheap. It's what I like to do, but in here I put a little perfume, hand sanitizer, a pen. Those are pretty much all the extras that I would need when I get out of my car. I'll put my keys in here so that the keys don't roll around and scratch the napa lining. I love this solution. I could do a whole video on how much I love this solution. This has like a polyester coated lining. So if any of those things leak, it's not likely to get through. It dries, I've accidentally spilled water on this and the items inside didn't get wet. It wiped off immediately. So it stands to reason that things leaking out, it will be somewhat protected, but it's just really flexible. And all of that fits in there really easily and you're good to go. I was worried at first that it would be hard to get in and out. What if like, let's say you're at the grocery store, you're juggling a million things, you're using your phone to scan for rewards, you're trying to get your wallet out. It's really simple. Nothing, nothing just falls out, but it stays pretty organized. So all of those are the reasons why I love this bag. Let's get on to the cons. Now, I mentioned that this is a poplar frame, leather on the inside, leather wrapped around the outside. All of that adds up to a really heavy, heavy bag. It says on their website that it's poplar frame, but for some reason I didn't put it together that would make this bag astronomically heavy. It's a sturdy bag. Now you don't notice it after a while, 
but around the second hour, my shoulder definitely does notice it. I'll start to get sore, like I said, around the second, third hour. So this is not an all day bag for me. It's a, it's an errand run, maybe a quick shopping trip, something like that. I was hoping that this would be the go-to travel handbag because it can get dressed up, it can get dressed down. When I travel, I don't wanna bring a million and one handbags. Green for me is absolutely a neutral. It goes with all of my clothes, easily going out to dinner, running around sightseeing all day, but I could never, never <laughs> carry this for a full day out sightseeing. It is that heavy and I don't have a shoulder injury. I've never had any past injuries on my back and I get sore at, you know, after just a little while. So not really feasible. <sighs> It hasn't stopped me from using it. It hasn't stopped me from loving it, but it's something I should mention because I know I, I follow a few ladies on here where they've mentioned shoulder injuries and it's just good to know what you're getting into. If you have a number of bags that you like to use for those trips, that's fantastic. I have a pretty small collection at this point, so I want to use all of my bags heavily. If you're trying to maintain a tiny collection, bags that are limited in one way or another can be, it can be kind of annoying. My next con, my next con would be the strap. Now, I don't think a big chunky strap would look good on this, but obviously with it being thin, you really feel the weight, but also I'm not wild about the little, um, the length options. I carry this on the very shortest shortest strap length. I'll insert some pictures showing you what it looks like, how I normally wear it, and then followed by the very longest length. It gets so long. I'm 5'5 five five and strictly average in every way. I wear this on the shortest strap length, and to me that is a perfect crossbody. It's a little bit long on that setting to wear as a shoulder bag. I would have loved to have that versatility. I thought about poking extra holes in it, but then this leather would, I think it would um, creep down over the bag and not quite look right. Because as it is, it is already stretched out down pretty far. I don't think there are many people who would want this on the longest length. If you're more petite than me, if you're slimmer, this might sit a little bit too low. It just works on me, I would say. But, you know, we all have preferences on where we like our bags to sit. If you are taller or curvier, if you have a bigger bust than me, this is not going to be a problem for you at all. It's going to sit right where you want it and you're going to have a ton of options if you want it to be longer. So those would be the biggest cons. Mm. It's hard for me to say whether or not I would buy this again, full price. I feel like maybe this this scratched the itch for me. If there was a seasonal color that I loved, I would buy it again at 50% off. I don't see myself buying this full price. If you absolutely love the shape, like I said, it's not like anything else out there and it's worth it for you. Maybe you have a bigger budget for handbags than I do. Maybe you love it a lot more than I do. I mean, by all means, <laughs> you know, they, they are fantastic and there's no guarantee that they'll go into the seasonal sale or that they won't sell out. I know this past summer they had a number of options. I actually purchased two bags from them at the same time. I was only able to do that because they were 50% off. But I think knowing what I know now and how I use this bag, I won't be buying a one at full price, maybe not another one. Like I said, if there's the right color, they do come out with beautiful patterns and different textures. They have a suede one right now in burgundy and just really bright, interesting designs. I love that. I do love the look, but there, there are some trade-offs. So I really hope this was helpful. I'm going to insert a few pictures of me wearing it. You can see where it sits on me, how I like to style it. I use it at least once a week. I do change out my bag every single day because I carry so little, it's not a hassle to switch them in and out. And my cats will destroy everything, so all of my bags have to be put away at night. Nothing can be out on the table because my one cat who has food insecurity thought that this would be a tasty little snack and chewed up the handle. Um, it's fine. 
it's fine, I'm not devastated, it's, it's okay. But I do have to put them away at night. I love this bag, I use it quite a bit, especially for something new. I've already gotten a lot of use out of it. I hope this was helpful and maybe next week I will have an unboxing. So please stay tuned and check in with me then. Bye.